All right, guys, so I, like a lot of you guys, are closely monitoring what is going on with the current presidential race between President Trump and Joe Biden, in which it looks like it is gridlocked right now. Uh, President Trump definitely still has a path to victory. Don't let anybody fool you on that. But as of right now, I do need to go over uh, the statewide uh, citizen initiatives that are very important and interesting for us to talk about but before we get in that my name is greg foreman and you're watching a black conservative perspective make sure you like comment and subscribe most importantly share a black conservative perspective aka a liberal's worst nightmare you can also follow me on twitter at g foreman bcp let's get it all right guys so like i said there were about 38 uh statewide citizen initiatives that uh were being decided on tuesday that were voted on um by the people um in regards to uh, changing some laws in various states across the country um, and they're very interesting so i'm going to go over them and uh, first up is oregon uh, which basically has decriminalized everything right so oregon has become the first state to decriminalize small amounts of cocaine heroin methamphetamines and other drugs uh, the oregon measure makes possession of small amounts of what have long been considered hard drugs a violation similar to a traffic ticket um, and are no longer punishable by jail time. Uh, the law also funds drug addiction treatment uh, from marijuana sales tax, which marijuana has already been legal uh, in Oregon. So they're going to decriminalize hard drugs and then use those tax dollars to help uh, fund uh, drug addiction treatment. Now, if you have larger amounts of uh, these hardcore drugs, you could face misdemeanor charges. Um, and in some cases, if it's a commercial level, then, you know, you could be charged with a felony. So you can't be trapping out cocaine at a, at a large level like you Pablo Escobar or something and think you can get away with it in Oregon. Also, what's interesting is that Oregon voters also legalize uh, psilocybin, which is also shrooms or magic mushrooms uh, for people that are 21 years or older. They argue that this drug helps treat uh, depression, anxiety and other conditions so here's the thing i think conservatives are divided on legalization right um a lot of libertarians um and small government uh conservatives believe that drug laws are just an example of the government overstepping its boundaries in terms of what substances people can put into their bodies and they often use uh alcohol prohibition and how that failed um as, as an example for why the government should not get involved with what people put in their bodies in reference to drugs now other conservatives look at it more of a moral case where they feel like drugs have a negative effect overall on people um it decreases their motivation it, it leads them being addicts it leads them having um you know bad lives and it is a stress and negative externality on society both sides have uh, a decent argument but i tend to lean to more towards uh the legalization side um i think it's a good thing what oregon is doing they're keeping it illegal to traffic it at a, at a commercial level, um, which I think is good. And most importantly, they're using the sales to invest in drug addiction, which means that in the day you, you continue to preserve freedom while at the same time having more money and resources to help those who are addicted to these drugs and that are being negatively affected. So, I, I mean, I think it's a good thing. We can debate about that in the comment section. But New Jersey, South Dakota, Montana, and Arizona voters uh, decisively passed laws legalizing recreational marijuana so again, at this point, a bunch of states now uh, solidly out west and even some on the east coast and the northeast have now uh, legalized marijuana. And guys, I mean, it makes me wonder, right, like in, in these southwest states that, you know, President Trump is trying to win, like Arizona and Nevada, like, you know, if the Republicans had got ahead of marijuana legalization or decriminalizing drugs this year, if they had got ahead of that, would that have gave them a boost in those states? Um, I'm unsure about that, but it, it just makes me wonder why the Republicans aren't at least taking this issue more seriously and trying to get ahead of it and not letting the Democrats beat them to the punch on this. Because, I mean, it, it could have played a big role in terms of making Arizona more solid red and, and, and Nevada being more solid red if, if President Trump would have got ahead on it. But who knows? Uh, Florida. This one is also very interesting. Florida becomes the eighth state to enact a minimum wage of fifteen dollars an hour. They are going to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour by 2026. It is going to be raised incrementally uh, starting 
with a raise to ten dollars an hour by next september and then it's going to go up one dollar each september until uh 2026 and then after that uh the annual increases will be tied to inflation washington dc also has enacted a, a minimum wage of 15 dollars an hour as well now this is probably the most interesting one to me and the reason why is because florida went trump and they went trump pretty hard this election so you know they voted republican but yet they voted to also raise the minimum wage which to me as a conservative i don't necessarily agree with a minimum wage being raised to 15 dollars an hour um but i just think it's interesting how you see these populist ideas coinciding and being compatible with trump again that just goes back to kind of the things that trump was running on in 20 uh 2016 that i think made him really popular with people is some of these populist ideas and i think president trump even at a debate didn't fully discount the idea of a 15 dollar hour minimum wage i think he said that he wanted to leave it up to the states which is essentially what is up to right now so that's interesting to see that happen um this one conservatives would be very happy with uh in california um they decided to maintain a ban on affirmative action california voters also passed proposition 22 which is a measure that was promoted by the gig economy companies like uber lyft and doordash that allows them to treat their uh drivers as independent contractors i love this one um because a lot of people don't realize that the reason why these companies exist like uber lyft doordash is because you can treat your your employees as independent contractors they don't have to worry about health insurance and you know paying them a minimum wage or anything like that you know they work as they want to work and that that allows for certain workers to have more freedom in terms of figuring out how they want to be employed now if you want to choose to be full-time under uber and lyft you need to understand that you don't get the same benefits and protections as regular employment and i think that if they had not pass this and they had made it so these independent contractors had to be employees that's going to do more damage to the economy and to these companies than just maintaining it the way it is i'm a huge believer in a gig economy because i think it opens up freedom i think that's where um we're going in the future i think it allows people to make more money in a way in which they're not necessarily tied down to having to go into a job on a certain schedule on a certain day they could just get in your car, you can go make a couple deliveries, you can go drop some people off, you can do things that allow you to make extra money without being tied down to a job. And I think, again, that's good for business and that's good for the people. Now, if you're relying on those companies as a full-time job and you believe that you need to be getting full-time benefits, uh, you got your priorities out of line, right? Like you understand the amount of freedom that you have and why those jobs are so popular is because you have the freedom that you have. There's certain trade-offs that you have to make when you're thinking about taking those jobs and doing that full time, I just don't believe you should be doing it full time with that expectation. So that's just my opinion on that. I'm glad that that was passed. Uh, in Illinois, they're going to keep their flat tax, which is a uh, 4.95%. Um, there was an amendment to uh, have graduated taxes that were raised from 4.75% to 7.99% um, in reference to their income tax. But instead, they're going to keep their income tax flat at 4.95%. Now, conservatives will love this one as well. Uh, in Louisiana, an amendment was passed to add uh, these words to the state constitution. Nothing in this constitution shall be construed to secure or protect a right to abortion or require the funding of abortion. So this is a move by Louisiana to um, you know, make the constitution more in line with pro-life language and ideology. So that's a good thing. Uh, but in Colorado, uh, voters uh, soundly defeated a proposal to ban abortions after 22 weeks of gestation, which, I mean, Jesus Christ, man. I mean, 22 weeks. And in Colorado, you could still get an abortion after 22 weeks. That's that's crazy to think about, man. I mean, that's, again, morals, man. Like, at some point, you know, in our country, like, you know, you got to understand morals and values. And finally, in Mississippi, voters approved a new flag with red, yellow, and blue stripes, a magnolia flower, and the words, in God we trust. The state's previous flag, which dated back to 1894, had contained a Confederate battle cross and was decommissioned by lawmakers in June. So basically, they're replacing their flag with a new flag in Mississippi. That's basically it, guys. Um, again, what's going on right here with the presidential election? I know everybody has their eyes on that. But this is some of the things that are happening across the country um, in terms of what voters are voting on and which laws are being enacted at a state level. 
So I just think it was important to go over that and to give my opinions on some of these things. Um, and we will continue to watch what's going on with presidential election. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.